equalizer. The 1991 world champion, Torres. Brad Schaefer's barefoot. The most feared monster truck in the world today, the Grave Digger. And the original monster truck, Bigfoot. All next on Monster Truck Challenge here on ESPN, the Total Sports Network. The Knickerbocker Arena in New York's capital, Albany, is the site of today's Monster Truck Challenge. Hi again, everybody. I'm Ken Brew. And David Morris in the Equalizer has everybody staring at his taillights. He turned in the fastest qualifying time of 2.42 seconds. Now, that means he'll have lane choice throughout the event. We'll see how much of an advantage that is for Mr. Morris. Based on qualifying, the Monsters match up for round one in the following way. Equalizer and Gravedigger. Torres continues his feud with Barefoot. And it'll be Bigfoot against the Carolina Crusher. And you know who has all the action. Let's go to Joe Lowe. Thank you, Ken. As they stage for round number one, Equalizer and Gravedigger. Equalizer, our fastest qualifier. Our Monster Truck Challenge microphones caught up with David and asked him about that qualification run. Yeah, the run felt real smooth. Um, seems like both lanes are going to be real competitive tonight. The track's pretty close to even, so we're going to have some real close races here tonight. Let's see how accurate that prediction is as David Morris and the Equalizer go against the Gravedigger, Lyle Hancock, handling the driving for the injured Dennis Anderson right now. Out of Kill Devil Hills, here we go. Whoa, David Morris certainly did call this one accurately. A very close race between the Gravedigger and the Equalizer. The U.S. Hot Rod Association, after reviewing the video, says Equalizer picks up the win and David Morris continues his dominance of Monster Truck Challenge. The Gravedigger with a hole shot. Equalizer up and three quarters of the way down the track catches him and overtakes the Gravedigger right at the finish line. And you can see that's what it takes. A nice smooth run. The tires lined up on the ramp up and over and staying low in the near lane as Equalizer advances to round number two of this Monster Truck Challenge in Albany, New York. David Morris advances. He takes the Equalizer on, and we're set for our next heat in first-round competition between Fred Schaefer's Barefoot and Jackie Wilman and Torres. After the qualifying run, both trucks had some problems. This is what it looked like in the Barefoot pit just before round number one. Fred Schaefer having to do a lot of work, but look at this. Torres, Jackie Wilman, and Joe Young as crew chief having to put things back together again, too. So both trucks have had to do a lot of work to prepare for round number one. And we're set to go right now with Taurus and Barefoot. Fred Schaefer at a pontoon beach, Illinois, and the incredible Barefoot monster truck. He faces the 1991 world champion, young Jackie Wilman, and the Taurus. Interesting highlight. Both these trucks are home-based within 30 miles of one another. Another incredibly close run in Monster Truck Challenge. And we see the win goes to Barefoot. Jackie Wilman a little bit quicker on the hole shot. The Barefoot Monster Truck soars through the air and to the finish line. Fred Schaefer, whatever he did between qualifying and round number one, certainly did it well because it got him a win. The ISO cam picks him up. And Fred Schaefer over the cars, a little out of shape towards the finish, takes out the finish pole, but picks up a win in round number one of our Monster Truck Challenge. So the truck that was just torn apart moments ago goes back to round number two. He's our winner. And we're set with the next matchup between Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher and 
Dan Runty and the Bigfoot Monster Truck representing Bob and Marilyn Chandler's team out of St. Louis, Missouri. Gary Porter, the lone wolf on the tour, travels by himself out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, and this guy is a true professional. Again, Carolina Crusher and the Bigfoot set to go in Monster Truck Challenge. Porter, Porter catches the guy sleeping. It's incredible. Dan Runty, who is not known for this, is caught napping at the starting line, and Carolina Crusher defeats Bigfoot in round number one of Monster Truck Challenge. Look at that. He picked up a whole truck length on the starting line, and Bigfoot just couldn't catch up. Now on the ISO cam, Gary Porter comes up. He looks good. He's over the cars. He says, hey, Fred Schaefer did it in the last run. I'm going to do it in this one. Let's take out the finish line, Paul. Boom. Thank you, Gary. We didn't want those things up there for this show anyhow. And Carolina Crusher goes to round number two as a winner in Monster Truck Challenge. The Lone Wolf, he's staying up with the big boys. Okay, so after round one, these are the winners. Equalizer, Carolina Crusher, Barefoot, and the fastest loser in round one is Bigfoot. Now, before we get to round two, I got to show you something you've probably never, ever seen. You're looking at the windshield wiper on one of the crushed cars. Now, think about it. This baby sat in a junkyard for who knows how long. It's been stomped on by monster trucks twice. I mean, it doesn't even have a windshield to wipe. Would that make a great battery commercial or what? Hey, we'll keep you posted on the windshield wiper, and we'll have round two action coming up in just a moment right here on Monster Truck Challenge. back TV's most exciting motorsport show from the Knickerbocker Arena in Albany, New York. We're ready for round two action. Equalizer faces Barefoot and Carolina Crusher goes against Bigfoot in a rematch. Crusher beat Bigfoot in the first round, but the Ford from St. Louis is back as the fast loser. Round two action. Let's go to Joe Lowe. Ken, excitement is building as Barefoot prepares for a do-or-die duel against David Morris and the Equalizer. Monster Truck Challenge's Jim Clark caught up with Fred Schaefer of Barefoot just before this run. Going up against the Equalizer, what do you think about that? Uh, he's one of the bad boys out there. Uh, Taurus is one of the bad boys. He's out now. And Equalizer is uh, the next bad boy out there. And we're going to see what happens. It's How's Barefoot running? I know you had some problems. Uh, you worked almost all day on it, and uh, you got it going. Well, uh, I, I think by beating Taurus, it's telling me it's running pretty good because uh, him and Equalizer has been the guys to beat, so this next round is going to be the tough one. Anything uh, different on, the, uh, on your vehicle? Uh, well, we had to change a lot of stuff on it. Uh, you know, we made a gear change and some other things uh, to, to try and run a little bit harder. A confident Fred Schaefer of Barefoot. David Morris, now you have lane choice tonight, but does it really make a difference right now? Both lanes seems pretty even tonight. Uh, they've, they've done a good job on the track here tonight, and with both lanes being even, the, the, no, no telling who could win the race. You going to do anything special as you go up against Barefoot? I'm just going to try to cut that, cut that good light and, and hold her to the floor. The smiling David Morris of Equalizer going against Barefoot. And David Morris in the equalizer, staying low in the near lane, picks up the win in round number two. David Morris, a little smile there through the helmet, you can see it, as he comes around and says, uh-huh, I did it. What's the difference? They both look good right here, but Barefoot goes high, equalizer stays low. Barefoot uses up a lot, a lot of space up in the air, and the equalizer crosses the finish line a full tire length ahead. This guy out of Springfield, Tennessee, David Morris, and his truck equalizer just seem as one as he continues to dominate, not only here in Albany, New York, but on the entire Monster Truck Challenge circuit. David Morris and the equalizer advances once again. And hey, as everybody else is getting ready and going outside, David Morris, where in the world are you going, buddy? Come on, Dave, you're supposed to go out the other way. Well, I, I guess David Morris 
dances to a different drummer. I don't know. Our next two competitors are coming up to the starting line. We're going to have to move the equalizer. And Carolina Crusher goes against Bigfoot. Jim Clark talks with Gary Porter of the Crusher. Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. You're up against Bigfoot in the uh, semifinals. Uh, tell us about your run and uh, what you look forward to up against Bigfoot. Well, before the event today, we changed the gear ratios in the truck. You know, trying to make it a little bit faster. Seems to be working good for us. It worked in qualifying. We won the first round. And we're going up against Bigfoot again. You know, he come back as the fast loser, and we're going to try to put him away again. Now, Bigfoot's Dan Ruff, he knows he's getting another chance, and he knows where he lost it the last time at the starting light. What was your run like, and uh, what do you look forward to up against the Crusher? It was a good run. The Ford Bigfoot's really doing a good job. I was a little late on the light myself. I didn't, I wasn't quite prepared when the light did go green. Um, I got to get a better light time on a track that's this short or it's all over. About the course, uh, are you getting much air time? Uh, what's the takeoff like? Uh, takeoff's really good here on this track. We're getting a lot of traction. It's really doing good as far as takeoff. And we're not getting a lot of air tonight. It's really helped. We've done some changes with our shocks and tire pressure that's helped us quite a bit as far as air. As in drag racing, cutting a good light is where it's at, and he does it! Dan Runty, when the light turns green, he's gone. Gary Porter is standing there going, what's going on? Where is everybody? Runty's over the finish line. And Bigfoot smokes the Carolina Crusher. You don't want to give this guy an inch. He's going to take a mile. Bigfoot saying, yeah, Gary Porter, you caught me napping once. It's not going to happen again. And the Bigfoot monster truck out of St. Louis, Missouri. Driving style impeccable. He's up. He's over. And Dan Runty showing us how it's done. If you want to see where this race was won, take a look at this. They're lined up. The light changes. There's where it's won. There's where it's won. Bigfoot has a jump of almost an entire truck lane over Carolina Crusher. Okay, so the finals are all set now in Albany. It'll be Bigfoot against the Equalizer. Oh, incidentally, how about an update on the windshield wiper? Let me tell you something. If I had that in my car, wait a minute, what's my car doing here? Well, if you're with us each week here on Monster Truck Challenge, you know one of the fellas we like to check in with is Dennis Anderson, the driver of Gravedigger. But I think you know that Dennis has been laid up with a broken knee. He had a terrible accident back in late 1991. Well, we check in with Dennis from time to time, and what we find out is he's not the kind of guy that just likes to sit around. I've been missing it out on the road. Uh, I've got this new truck, and it's been ready for about a little over three weeks now. And i got to walk into the shop and face that brand-new truck every day. On or off the track, Dennis Anderson is a people person. Since he likes being around monster trucks and his fans, it's especially tough for Dennis to spend the lonely hours needed to mend his broken knee. He fills some of those hours driving Street Digger on the beaches and dunes of North Carolina's Outer Banks. And he fills some of those hours doing what comes naturally to him, helping other people. He'll sit down and talk for hours on the telephone to his, you know, to his fans, telling them what he thinks they should do. But I've got Dana 70s. Now, if you really want to get Dennis going, drop by and ask him a 4x4 four four question. The factory truck would be if it had tires on it, you know, but I got a good motor in yeah, it, too. Yeah, because I got 410s in that half ton front and back. But when it comes to helping others, Dennis's pride and joy is Project Gravedigger at Virginia Beach Botec. The automotive technology students there now are rebuilding the original Gravedigger as a class project. Dennis loves talking about anything automotive, and he loves helping high school students. It's, it's really something neat for the kids, you know. It's a, it's a program to keep the kids off the street, for one thing, and they're interested in something in school for a change. The students at Virginia Beach Vocational Technical School have torn the truck down. When they've restored it, the original Gravedigger will go in a museum that Dennis plans to build. Attendance has been 100% during Project Gravedigger, so it's easy to see how much the students like working on the truck, and it's easy to see how much Dennis likes helping other people. And of course, as we continue on with Monster Truck Challenge, we'll hear from Dennis as the weeks and months progress, and hopefully he'll be back on his feet in no time, back behind the wheel. Before we get to more racing action, 
I want to introduce you to a fellow who is like Dennis because broken bones and crashes are nothing new to him. His name is Jeff Winky, and he calls himself a precision motorcycle driver. And did he ever give the fans in Albany a show? The song goes, Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys, but how about a motorcycle jumper? How about a daredevil? That's exactly what Jeff Winky's mom had to contend with when he said, Mom, I'm going on the road. I'm going to jump cars in a motorcycle. Matter of fact, I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to crash into cars with my motorcycle. And the crowd at Knickerbocker Arena can't wait to see it. He powers up, comes out of the tunnel at 45 miles an hour. Whoa! Into the side of a car, flies over the car, and lands on the ground. The crew comes over. Is he okay? Look at this. The adrenaline pumped up. He jumps over and onto the cars. The crowd on their feet as Jeff Winky shows you why he's one of the most intense daredevils in the world today. He thrills the crowd on the replay. Jeff Winky on the motorcycle into the side of the car. A big flash of flame. He jumps over the cars, and this guy doesn't even land in an airbag. He lands on the hard dirt surface of the arena. A couple of flips, and you gotta wonder, is he okay? What's going on here? I thought he was gonna stand up, but the motion just takes him back over. And after a quick breath, this guy is up. Here's how it's done. Jeff, why don't you start jumping about now, big guy? You're starting to scare me. And a hearty look out. Here I come, New York. Jeff Winky, the incredible daredevil, thrilling crowds everywhere he goes with the United States Hot Rod Association. Of course, it's all planned out, but every time he does it, it's dangerous as can be. That's why they give him the title, Daredevil. All right, coming up next, the big moment on Monster Truck Challenge. Equalizer versus Bigfoot. The showdown is coming up. Don't go away. And then there were two. Equalizer survived a lot of challenges in Albany. Gravedigger and Barefoot both went under, and Bigfoot had himself a pretty fair afternoon, too. He took care of the Carolina Crusher. So that sets up the championship battle. Let's go to Joe Lowe. The crowd is ready for the final, Ken, but just as he was pulling to the starting line, Bigfoot had a problem, and Jim Clark was there. Dan Runty, uh, doing a little work on your car here before the final run. Uh, what's going on? Uh, just backfired as I let off the gas coming over the cars and blew the muffler off. We, we are the only ones that run mufflers as far as monster trucks go, but it helps us as driving to hear other noises and when that comes off you see it gets pretty loud in here all right tell us about your last run and uh what you look forward to in the run up against the equalizer well hopefully i can go back and do the same thing that i did the last run um as far as uh the light goes i cut a good light on a short track like i said before you got to cut a good light to get it to get this race because after you leave that ramp that's all that counts well, since Stan Runty was interviewed sitting in his truck, David Morris demanded equal treatment, so we went to him. Tell us about the last run and what you look forward to in the run against Bigfoot. That last run, I just made sure that I got cut a good light and got out of the hole real fast and made a good hard run down to the finish line, and uh, that's what it's going to take to win this next round, too, because lanes are so so even today that, that either truck could win, so I'm just going to have to try to get that good hole shot and Go for it. They asked you about what lane you wanted to run, and you were real emphatic about this lane here. Uh, why did you feel that way? Well, that's the lane I qualified in, and uh, I haven't run on the other side uh, tonight, so I'm familiar with this side. I'm not familiar with the other side, so I'm going to stick over here to a lane that I, that I know. Smiling David Morris out of Springfield, Tennessee, in the equalizer. He's been no stranger to the winner's circle this season. And this race is going to be won again with the hole shot. Who's going to be quickest on the draw when the light turns green? And you got to watch out for one thing. There's one danger there. We see it in drag racing all the time. Dan Runty's been good so far. But both drivers are going to have to watch out for jumping that light. Here we go. The crowd's on their feet in the Knickerbocker Arena. They power up and... Bigfoot seemed to get 
the whole shot. David Morris, though, stays low in that near lane, the lane he's loved all night long. And they say, yes, he picked up the win by just about three feet. And although Bigfoot gets the whole shot, David Morris comes from behind by staying low, edges out Bigfoot and picks up yet another win on this Monster Truck Challenge season. The equalizer, definitely the dominant force on Monster Truck Challenge for 1992 so far this season. Whoa, David, powering out. And you can hear the crowd as they're presented with their winner here in Albany. He gets out of the truck, waves to the crowd, and the Southern boy comes up north and picks up a win for Gary Cook's Equalizer team. Ken Brew, it's been exciting. David Morris, the man can flat out drive. We'll hear from him, the winner, in just a moment. Five extra. David Morris pilots the Equalizer to the championship. Jim Clark is standing by with the champ. David Morris and the Equalizer, a big win here at Knickerbocker Arena tonight. Yeah, this win was a good one because it, it might have put me ahead in the points. I know it caught me up. Uh, I'm not sure yet. We'll just have to find out the point standings. But I'm hoping that it put me over in the point series this year. How did the equalizer run on this last shot? Well, the last shot, I think I actually found a little bit more throttle on it somehow. It seemed like a, the last run was faster than all the rest of them. And I was going for the, the quick light and uh, just run a good hard run. And that, that's what I got. And I took the win. What's next for David Morris and the equalizer? Me and Gary Cook and all the crew back at home and our tra B and J transmission, they've been working with us. And we're here. We're for real this year. We're going to win. All right. Well, congratulations and uh, hope to see you again real soon. Thanks. That's the champ, David Morris. Hey, listen, if you have any questions about the sport of monster truck racing or the show, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a postcard at this address. Monster Truck Challenge, 477 East Butterfield, Suite 400, Lombard, Illinois, and that zip code is 60148. We'd be glad to answer any of your questions. Well, that's it for now. Till next time, I'm Ken Brew, urging you to drive safely and don't try that motorcycle stunt at home. <laughs>